Now let's recall the exercises that I proposed that you do, and that was to reconstruct arguments. Remember, argument reconstruction means we have numbered premises, you draw a line under it or write therefore, and then a numbered sentence that's the conclusion. Okay, but there were four that I asked you to reconstruct. The argument for turning the trolley, uh, the argument for against turning the trolley example, the argument for throwing off the fat man off the bridge, and the argument against throwing the fat man off the bridge. Now, let's take a look at the solutions to this. The first one, you know, the question, is it right to turn the, tro to turn the trolley? The answer was yes. We get the turn the trolley argument, the conclusion being the right thing to do is to turn the trolley. Premise, and remember, if you go back to the beginning of our uh, discussions of ethics, we were talking about, uh, when we are talking about William Franken and the nature of ethics, he said, oftentimes or usually we're going to have an argument, remember the Socrates argument, where we're going to have one premise that's a moral premise, another premise that's a factual premise, and we're going to get a moral conclusion. Well, here we have our moral conclusion, that is the right thing to do is to turn the trolley, or another way of putting that is you ought to or you should turn the trolley. Now we get something, that a premise that says, if we can save five people by killing one, then the right thing to do is to kill the one. And uh, we might have put innocent in there. There are other ways of, of making that claim. But if we look at it, that premise is a moral premise. And the second premise, the one that connects that first premise with the con that's needed to connect that premise to the conclusion is that turning the trolley would save five people by killing one. And if we notice, or we should notice, the argument in this uh, in this excuse me, the logic in this argument is impeccable. It's good. It's fine. That if those two premises are true, that guarantees the truth of that, that, con those, that conclusion. So the only question is, are the two premises true? Certainly the second one is true. Why is it true that turning the trolley would save five people by killing one? Well, that's the way the example was set up. And the first one, if there's any place to doubt... Uh, that is, if there's any room to doubt that the right thing to do is to turn the trolley, we're going to have to find a reason for thinking that that moral principle that we use, number one, is false. Okay, now let's turn to the minority opinion or the argument for the minority opinion. Is it right to turn the trolley? No. The don't turn the trolley argument, the conclusion being the right thing to do is not to turn the trolley premise is it's wrong to kill one person even if it saves five and perhaps I should have formulated that it's wrong to kill one innocent person or an innocent person even if it saves five and the premise that connects that moral principle with our moral conclusion is kind of the factual premise that is turning a trolley would save five people by killing one now again the logic of this argument is is good. It is a valid inference that's being made. And the second premise is true. Why? Because that's the way we set the example up. So the question is, is that first premise true? If the first premise is true, we have to take the minority opinion. Okay, so so far now the question is, we had a moral principle in the first one. Let's go back and just look at it. That is number one. Right over here, if we can save five people by killing one, then the right thing to do is to kill one. So if there was anything wrong, I mean, to get us the right answer in the trolley example, we have to decide, is that moral principle or is this moral principle right? It is wrong to kill one person, one innocent person, even if it saves five. Okay, so those were the ones in the trolley example. And notice the majority opinion in the trolley example was that the right thing to do is to turn the trolley. So f they thought the first argument was sound. This one is not sound. Now let's turn to the fat man example because we see something rather interesting in the fat man example. Right, question, is it right to throw the fat man off the bridge? This was not the majority opinion here. This is a minority opinion, but yes, it is. And what was the argument for that? Well, it's the throw the fat man off the bridge argument. And the conclusion being the right thing to do is to throw the fat man off the bridge. 
first premise, if we can save five people by killing one, then the right thing to do is to kill one. And the premise that connects that, that is the moral principle that connects that moral principle to our moral conclusion is throwing the fat man off the bridge would save five people by killing one. Just like the other ones, this argument makes a valid inference. That is, it is a valid argument. The truth of the premises would guarantee the truth of the conclusion. And the second premise is clearly true. So if there's a problem with it, it's got to be a problem in that moral principle. Okay, so that was the minority opinion. The majority opinion in this case is that, is it right to throw the fat man off the bridge? No. Don't throw the fat man off the bridge argument. It's wrong to kill one person or an innocent person, even if it saves five people. Throwing the fat man off the bridge would save five people by killing one. Conclusion, the right thing to do is to not is not to throw the fat man off the bridge, or the wrong thing to do is to throw the fat man off the bridge. It says the same thing. Uh, now, again, the, lo- the, the inference is valid. The logic is good. The only question we have now is, is the argument sound, right? The inference is valid. The question is whether... That is, those, the truth of those premises, if they were true, would guarantee the truth of the conclusion. The second premise, again, is just the factual premise. It's the way we set up the example. So the question is, is that moral principle right? Is it really wrong to kill one person, even if it says five?